This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller and exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Good morning, good evening, and good night. As we welcome you to the best hour in internet radio, the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller. This is TalkTainmentRadio.com, and we go where you go on the world's greatest radio. And this is radio the way it should be heard. In a few moments, we're going to open up the call-in lines. But before we do that, we will speak about Mr. Fuller, his book, and also donations. Uh, Mr. Fuller is the author of, we just simply call it the code, but the name of the book is called the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. It is a compensatory counter-racist codified word guide, which will uh, help you to um, understand racism. As a matter of fact, he has an, a revised, expanded edition of the Racist Code for um, victims of racism, a textbook, workbook for thought, speech, interaction for victims of racism. So we will have him get into that. Our topic today is the fifth and final installment of the fourth area of people activity, which will be labor. But of course, uh, Mr. Fuller will answer any questions that you have and any uh, subject uh, or topic that you want to talk about, it doesn't have to be on labor, but that's what we are going to focus on today, which is going to be a labor. So have your questions ready, and you can call even right now if you want to at one 932 9766 It's a toll-free call, and um, we'll get you on, and you can answer your questions, or you can Gmail me at the numero 7, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com and while and while we are on that I'd like to thank those who have uh, donated uh, to the second hour of the compensatory concept the donations are coming in so keep them coming in we have not reached our projected goal yet but still keep them coming in all you have to do since you're on the talk team at radio.com home page is hit the donate button and you can donate any amount that you want to and that will help further the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. So thank you for those who have already donated. And uh, for those who want to, the instructions on there are very simple. Okay, I think that's all the house cleaning I have to do. Let's get out of the way and speak to Mr. Neely Fuller. Mr. Fuller, good morning, and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. You are still learning. Okay. Uh, seems like I'm forgetting something, but let's let's go on here. Okay, we're going to get into um, the f- uh, fourth area of people activity, and we are in the final installment installment of this before we will move on to the fifth area, which next week will be law. And there were a couple of questions that somebody had uh, mentioned to me about. Uh, Going back on page 142, um, speaking about the eyes, always think about the eyes in inquiry, investigation, and indictment. And um, as we get into that, um, what, in terms of labor, are we speaking to, or are you, or that you spoke to concerning those three eyes? Well, it's to keep people focused uh, and to stay away from accusing anybody of anything. Uh, for example, on a job situation, if there's any kind of problem, be very reluctant to accuse anybody of doing anything. Uh, the three eyes are called in order to keep you focused on not doing that. And I came up with something called the three eyes of labor. And that is inquiry, investigation, and then indictment. 
An indictment means you're accusing somebody. You're making an accusation. Stay away from that altogether. Don't ever accuse if you can all possibly get around it. Don't ever accuse anybody of doing anything. It makes your situation more complicated. Always stay, if you can, in the first lane, I call it. That's the way I express it. Inquiry. You have inquiry, you have investigation, then you have indictment. That's the process. That's the sequence. You inquire as to what's going on. That's the first thing you do. It's something going on that maybe should not be going on. It may be something that should be happening, maybe something that shouldn't be happening. You just make an inquiry into it. Then investigation means you go into the details of the inquiry. See, inquiry just means you raise a question. Something happening here, something happening. I mean, uh, down there on the dock, I mean, the, the fellows who are operating the forklifts, I mean, uh, seems like it's a dangerous situation down there. See, but you don't specify who is causing the dangerous situation. You don't name anybody. You're just raising questions. Is it a dangerous situation? Is someone likely to get hurt uh, down where they're operating the forklifts? I'm just giving this as an example. Yes, sir. And so you're just making an inquiry. And then someone will say, well, yes, it does seem to be a dangerous situation down there. I mean, we haven't had it before, but it's like it's evolving into that now. And why is this? So now you've gotten beyond the inquiry stage, so you just ask for an investigation. Say, well, somebody go down and take a look and see if the forklifts are being operated in a way that they should be. If it's too many of them down there with too little space, uh, if someone likely to get injured or hurt, we want to head that off. So that calls for an investigation. See, but you haven't indicted anybody. You haven't said it's somebody's fault. Stay away from that. If you're on the job, stay away from saying whose fault it is mm -hmm. if something is going on. First, mm -hmm. investigate. The investigation will lead to whose fault it is. And so it might be, you know, uh, just one of those things where you have what I call environmental error factors. Uh, they redesign the docks where the forklifts are supposed to be operated. So what you do is ask the person who redesigned the place and say, well, you didn't have enough room left for the people to operate the forklift safely. They're always real close to the edge of the dock. Somebody's going to fall off the dock. Some of the forklifts are going to eventually fall off that dock. See what I mean? But that came about as a result of the investigation. But you haven't named anybody as being at fault yet. See, that's the main thing. Stay away from that. Stay away from saying so-and-so is down there and he's doing this or she's doing that and she's always messing up and all like that. Sometimes people on a job do that immediately. No. Look at the situation first. At the situation, not the personalities. And that's what those three eyes mean. Okay. Stay in the inquiry lane. Try to Don't even move to the investigation lane. Usually try to have somebody else do that. Okay. You just raise the question. Mm -hmm. And then call for an investigation if you think that it's something that needs to be corrected. That's the procedure. That is the procedure. Okay. How would that be uh, effective with what happened in, in regards to Rodney King, the beating that we all saw on TV, uh, the murder of Freddie Gray, and now the, ac the accusation that President, former President Obama wiretapped the Trump Towers. Uh, how would that, the three eyes, come into play on that? Well, we're in the area of labor, so that would come in the area of law. Okay. But you can still use the same thing. I mean, this is that that's procedure, like everything in compensatory logic. One blends into another. One yes. area blends into another. Yes. So that would apply to a legal situation, too. 
you're going in the court. Right. Stay away from making accusations. You call for an inquiry. You you start an inquiry and call for an investigation, and you stand back. And you would do the same thing with the Rodney King beating, even though you're looking at it on videotape or whatever, whatnot. You may the videotape may not tell the whole story, like some people have said. So you make an inquiry. Okay, what is the whole story? That's an inquiry. That's a question. Yes. See, inquiry just means I'm asking a question. Not only one question, I might ask three dozen questions. Yes, yes. See, but that three dozen questions will come under the inquiry catalog, under the inquiry title. Okay. Okay. Stay in that inquiry lane. And they'll say, well, are you accusing these officers? I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything. I'm just saying what it looked like. And I, it looked like somebody might be doing something that shouldn't be done. But they did investigate that. Yes, but I do want an investigation. Yes. I'm calling for an investigation of all of the details. All right. Well, you mean the details that are shown on tape? Well, or even the details that are not on the tape? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I want a complete picture of how all of this evolved, all right? And that way we get to what? The, the right. truth. Okay, the because truth. Because everything about uh, compensatory logic is about trying to find the truth about everything. Everything. Right. Okay. Let's go to the phone line before we continue that. Uh, are we ready? Okay, line number one. You are on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Hello. Um, I heard uh, Mr. Fuller, Mr. Fuller's work through Tariq Nasheed. And I've heard other non-white people talk about Mr. Neely Fuller's work, like Gusty Renegade, Professor Black Truth, and uh, Jason Black. And my question for Mr. Fuller would be, and I know he's in, in the twilight of his life, how does he feel about other non-white people with bigger platforms than him, bringing his work to a newer generation of non-white people? How does what now? How does Mr. Fuller feel about non-white people who have a bigger platform than talk tamer radio, bringing his his work at the compensatory concept to a new generation of non-white people. Oh, as long as uh, everybody stands by their work. In other words, uh, I, I want people to you know, talk about the ideas that are in my book, the ideas that come off of talk tamer radio. I want people to discuss these things, uh, but not to distort what I'm saying. Always keep it separated, what somebody else is saying, and what the person who is doing the talking, what that person is saying, and keep that separated from what Neely Fuller is saying. Because every now and then I hear things about what I have said that I haven't said. And that, that's, that's a real serious problem. And it's a serious problem because the white supremacists are excellent at doing that type of thing. Saying that someone said something that the person didn't say. And they are, you know, are constantly watching for any opening where they can interject themselves into a discussion about anything that they think might be helpful to the victims of racism. So they watch for that so that they can cause what? Confusion. See, because once you get confusion, everything is all downhill. Yes. And the racists thrive off of confusion. Okay. So you want always everybody, what everybody has to say, whether you agree with it or not, to be separated so that each and every person's views are fully aired. Okay. Now right, That's the main thing. With that, and, and no distortions. No distortions. Now, with that being said, since the caller brought this up, do you, Mr. Fuller, care if the names of these people that uh, this gentleman mentioned, do you care if they profit off of the work that you have done and you're not compensated for that? Do you well, care uh, if there's a legal matter there, if, 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 there, if some law is being violated, see, that's what it comes down to, uh, copyright law uh, mm -hmm. and plagiarism. Uh, there are a lot of laws that are involved in that. Everybody should make sure, including myself, that I'm not plagiarizing somebody else, all right? And I'm not profiting from somebody else's work. If, if, you know, it's a legal matter. Okay. Because if it's not illegal, then nobody can 
make a complaint anyway. But you, everybody should make sure that they're not doing anything illegal because that itself will cause a serious problem. Okay. Uh, you know, we have what you call the First Amendment in the Northwestern Hemisphere gives you freedom of speech. But that doesn't mean that you can just go about repeating something that somebody else said or, or profiting from something that somebody else said unless you do it in a very orchestrated legal manner. Okay. You don't you don't get into any illegal illegalities. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they're what you call gray areas of the law and all like that. But everybody should stay away from that line that separates something illegal. Okay. From something that is legal. All righty. So uh, you check and see if what you're doing is legal first, and uh, then go forward. All right. Thank you, caller. Okay, uh, let's see here. Are we ready to go to the second call? Okay, go ahead, caller. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Oh. Yes, go ahead. Oh, hi. How you doing, guys? Um, I was calling because uh, I know Mr. Fuller talks about uh, there being codes and messages in movies, and I saw the movie Get Out, and I feel like that is, like, really excellent for what he talks about uh, showing uh, white supremacy, and I was curious to know if any of you guys saw it. Have you heard any comments regarding it? Mr. Fuller? Get out? Yes. G-E-T-O-U-T. -E yes. I've never heard the title of the movie. What's the movie okay. about? Oh, well, basically it's about a young man who's dating a white young lady, and uh, he goes to visit her parents, and as he gets there, uh, he finds out that there were other uh, black men that were brought there, and they were pretty much, uh, like, I won't say hypnotized. Well, I would say hypnotized, and pretty much uh, they auction him. They want to auction him off, and he needs to get out of the surroundings of uh, the people because of all the things they want to do to him. So, I just wanted to recommend it regarding what you talk about. I think it's pretty much like the best movie that a person can see regarding uh, what you mentioned as far as codes and white supremacy that's presently out. So, you should check it out. Okay, the movie's called Get Out. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, it's written by uh, Jordan Peele uh, from Key and Peele, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, all righty. Uh, let's see here. Let's take another call. Uh, what line are we on? Line number three? Okay, line number three. You are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller. What is your question? Hi, good morning. Uh, my question today is, to Mr. Fuller, with so much going on as far as with our president saying, making certain statements, does the truth really matter anymore? Because I know they come up with different terms, all facts and things like that. So does the truth even matter anymore to these uh, white supremacists or suspected white supremacists? White supremacists usually, see, truth is, is, according to the code, is that which is. That which is what? That which is what it is, rather than that which is not, okay? The difference between truth and falsehood. The white supremacists specialize in deception, which means they say many things that are not true, thousands of things. And uh, they don't have any problem with that, because you have to... Uh, spread falsehood in order to maintain the system of white supremacy. You have to say many things that are not true. You, you have to pretend. You have to be absolutely hypocritical and make everybody else uh, hypocritical. Uh, this is a requirement of the system of white supremacy. Everybody has to be phony, including black people, the victims of white supremacy. We're required to be. We're required to be hypocrites, all of us. And all of us, according to compensatory counter-racist logic and the truth, are. You know, because we are in a hypocritical society, a hypocritical system called the system of white supremacy. It is hypocritical. It's contradictory. They talk about justice, but they don't practice it. Oh, you find talk about justice, talk about justice, talk about justice, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Justice, justice, believing in justice, believing in doing the right thing by people at all times, without fail. Guarantee this, guarantee that. Oh, yes, they will say it, but they don't believe in any of it. And they prove that they don't believe in it. Because that's what the white system of white supremacy is. It's just full of this one lie right after another. 
and it gets their victims to participate in the lies, mm-hmm. forces us to do it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Go to school and learn things that are absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. The people who sit down and write this stuff and then put it in the in the history books and all like that and the sociology books and uh, the books on sexuality and whatnot. I mean, just blatantly, just say anything that will do what? Help to support the system of white supremacy. That's what it's all about. Mm. If it doesn't support the system of white supremacy, they'll see to it that that's not done. Yes. Okay. Okay. All righty. Uh, before we take the next call, talk to him at radio.com is a 24 7 no charge worldwide broadcasting facility that have host delivering on various topics such as news and lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and of course politics. Now, here's several that I'd like to share with you. One is called New Money, the next one is Conversation with Don Karina. And the third one is super cool. Now, I'm not going to go into detail of these particular programs. However, you can go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage and click on Programs. And there is a list of these programs and other programs that TalkTainment has to offer and also the times and a brief description of each program. And it is exclusive to talk team at radio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. And while you are there, hit that donate button so that we can go or continue on the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller Jr. You wanted it, and now it's here, so let's keep it going. Hit that donate button, whatever you want to donate, and we'll be all cool with that. Okay. So let's do this uh, before we take the yeah before we take the uh, phone, okay line number one you are now on with Mr. Nilly Fuller Jr. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. All right. Um, I have a question about a quote Nilly Fuller might have had in one of his older editions. I think it went if if a non-white female has prolonged inter- intimate interactions with the white man, she will eventually be turned into a harlot. I think was the term he used. And my question was, why is that? Mr. Fuller? She would eventually be turned into a what? A harlot. Harlot? Yes. I don't remember for our writing that. Uh, you know, we might check that edition again. But here's what I do say. Possibly? Uh, say that again, sir? It might have been the 1958 edition. I'm not sure. 1984. I just have one edition before the... 2016 edition, you know, but uh, I don't remember using that word, uh, except yeah, except that? maybe in the word God, uh, but uh, if you're talking about sexual intercourse between any white person and any non-white person during the existence of white supremacy, it automatically means that the non-white person is being taken advantage of. It's not an equal relationship. That is the analysis. According to what? According to logic. I mean, you have to... Sexual intercourse is supposed to take place only between equals. People who have an equal amount of power. That's Otherwise, it's supposed to be null and void right there. Because it means somebody's taking advantage of somebody if they don't have equal power. Victims of racism do not have equal power with racists or with people who have the power to be racist, which in this case, in the system of white supremacy, you would first have to be classified as white. So if a white person, even with the best of intentions, has sexual intercourse with a non-white person before white supremacy is ended, that white person is automatically taken unjust advantage of the non-white person, whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter. You can't have sexual intercourse with a person who is subordinate to the system of white supremacy. A victim of white supremacy is not supposed to have sexual intercourse with a white person during the existence of white supremacy. If you get rid of the system of white supremacy and replace it with a system of justice, which means then everybody is equal, then 
It's no problem. It's boy meets girl. It's hooray for love or whatever you want to call it. But up until then, the non-white person is in a child-like position. And it is child abuse for a white person to have sexual intercourse with a non-white person anywhere on the planet, any time of day or night. It comes under the title of sexual abuse of child abuse because the non-white person is in the position of a child and the white person is in the position of being a mature person. That's the way to look at it because that's the way it really is. According to what? According to logic. All righty. All righty. Thank you, caller, for the call. Uh, what li- where are we at? Line number two. Line number two. You are now on with Mr. Nilly Fuller. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, Mr. Fuller and Mr. Bobby. Uh, I guess this is somewhat of a follow-up on the question Mr. Fuller just answered. So let's say not dealing with non-white people. Uh, I'm familiar with the questions in the in the new code book to ask about a, a sexual mate. So let's say I'm a non-white person and a woman. And interested in pursuing a sexual relationship. Uh, according to the code. Hello? You're coming in broken up. Hello? Yeah, do you hear me better? Yeah, but you're breaking up. Uh, hey, I tell you what, why don't you call back and then we'll get you uh, after the break because you're breaking up, okay? Okay. All right. All righty. Um, let's see here. Uh, you were speaking be- before all the calls came in. The last part of the eyes was the in- in- indictment, and um, President, o- former President Obama was a- was is a being accused of wiretapping the the Trump Tower. Uh, how would you re-, uh, uh, re how would that come into play? The three eyes, you know, with that. Well, once you make an accusation, you got to prove it. But the burden of proof is on the accuser. Yes. But but the but the presidential team, they they made the statement the accusation, but they offered absolutely no proof whatsoever that uh, that former President Obama did that. I mean, how, how do you respond to that? Uh, in the I'm codified way, I respond to it by saying exactly what I said before: the burden of proof is on the accuser. You said that a person did something. Where's the evidence? Where is the evidence? That's the question. All problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. So the question is, where is the evidence? You say that this person did this, this person did that. Okay, show the evidence where this was done by this person. Where is the evidence? Burden of proof. And that's what that's where it is. Yes. And that applies to anybody, anywhere, anywhere on the planet, any time of day or night. Right. And and that is what they have been asking. Talk team at radio.com. We go where you go, and you can check us out on 94.1 WGRN. Podcasts are available. Download the Talk team at radio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. Stay right there. We're going to delve more into the final installment of the fourth area of people activity, which is labor, and also more of your calls. All that and more on TalkTimidRadio.com. With a Bobby Womack tribute. Doors open at 6 and show starts at 7. Get tickets now at the Kappa Ticket Center or Kappa.com. To Libs, Solano, Beauty All Over, and Elite Barbershop. The Temptations featuring Dennis Edwards at the Palace Theater. For more info, call 614-805-1376. 
Families affected by disasters urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to those affected by disasters, big and small. Donate to Red Cross Disaster Relief. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. See that cute little dog in the pet store? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppies to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. But with one simple choice, you can help, just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Think fast. In less than 30 seconds, a small flame can become a big fire. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and keep heaters three feet away from anything that can burn. Learn more at usfa.com. FEMA.gov because fire is everyone's fight. I've got the water, energy bars, and camera. I think we're set for the hike. Almost. We need to protect our skin. Don't forget your wide brimmed hat and sunscreen. All right. I've got the hat. I've got SPF 30. Will that work? Yeah. Anything 15 or higher is good. Just make sure it says broad spectrum. Great. Got it. I am not getting burned again. Let's go. Learn more at cdc.gov slash cancer. Every year, June marks the beginning of two busy seasons, summer and wedding season. If you are legally changing your name, you need to apply for a replacement Social Security card reflecting your new name. This is easier to fix now when you first change your name than years from now when you retire. So go to our website at www.socialsecurity.gov slash SS number or call us at 1-800-772-1213, TTY 1-800-325-0778 to find out what specific documents you need to change your name and apply for a replacement card. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Go ahead. Make my day. You got the power. Okay. TuffPaymentRadio.com. We go where you go. And you can simply download the TuffPaymentRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Our topic is the four, uh, is the fifth and final installments of the fourth area of people activity, which is labor. You can now call in at one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, or you can Gmail me at the numeral number seven, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com and I will try to get to your gmails but if I don't then I'll put it on the back burner for next week don't forget that while you're there uh, to the talk team at radio.com homepage to, to hit the donate button so that we can continue the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller which is coming up in about 27 minutes you might want to do that uh, before we go on and take the call, Mr. Fuller, I'm required to ask you to speak about your book just for about a minute so we can get back to the phone calls and Gmails. Cause, so, so would you speak to your book? Yes. The book is uh, the subtitle. I'll just go directly to the, the, to the supplementary title. Textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of white supremacy. And white supremacy is racism, and racism is white supremacy. There's no other form that's the premise of the book. Uh, the true or false is that there's no other form of racism other than the system of white supremacy. And the book is written for people who perceive themselves as being victims of of the system of white supremacy and are victims of racism, which is white supremacy. And it's uh, segmented into nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. And you go to any area of activity and just, you know, browse through there. I always recommend that the book be read, basically, uh, on an ongoing basis, simply by turning to any page and see if you get anything out of it, out of what you're looking at. And if not, just 
turn it, flip to any other page. I mean, pass, bypass five or six or, or a dozen pages or two dozen pages and just open it anywhere and see if you see anything that you can use. It's all directed to the individual person, the individual person, the individual victim, the person who perceives him or herself to be the victim of racism about what you can do as an individual person, the doing part, what you can do as an individual person on a daily basis about racism or any other form of non-justice, because that's what racism is, non-justice, mistreatment of people. And you can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. All right, ProduceJustice.com. Okay, let's go to the phone lines, line number one. Okay, you're on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Go ahead, please. You all hear me better, Mr. Yes, Fuller? we hear you better. Go ahead. All right. I'm sorry about that earlier. All right, so Mr. Fuller, question for you. Uh, I don't see, I don't hear you talk too much about physical beauty, and so I wonder, as a non-white male, if I look at a non-white female that I'm interested in pursuing a sexual relationship with, according to the code, should my first thought be, and my first action regarding her be, how to eliminate racism? Your question is, say that again? Uh, so, what if I see someone that I'm physically attracted to, what should, what should my next thought and action be regarding her in this system of white supremacy? Well, your next thought is if she uh, has constructive intent. You're attracted to a person. That's what's going to matter. In, in the end, and you should have constructive intent. See, it always starts with what your intentions are. And you ask yourself, are your intentions constructive? You know, if you do what it is that you want to do, everybody wants to do something, is the result going to produce something that's constructive? That's it. And anybody that you interact with, Period. In any capacity, in any area of activity, you want to know is the outcome going to be constructive or is it going to be non-constructive? Because it's going to be one or the other. There's no such thing as in between. It's going to have a constructive result or a non-constructive result. Now, this thing about the word beauty, there are, according to the code, what I've written, either true or false, better or worse. I mean, that's for the reader to determine. No such thing as a beautiful person. You don't have beautiful people in the system of white supremacy. That's, that's, that's not possible. You have attractive people. You know, people are attracted to each other all the time. But beautiful people are yet to be produced. Because beautiful people practice justice, for one thing. And nobody can practice justice in the system of white supremacy. So physical attractiveness, we all have that. You know, that's just physical attractiveness. What's attractive to one person may not be attractive to another person. So, that's just an individual choice. Okay. All righty. Uh, thank you very much, my uh, caller. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yes, you. sir. Okay, before we move on in the continuation of the fourth area of people activity, which is labor, uh, Dr. Javari just sent me something concerning the movie Get Out since it was brought up earlier uh, in this segment or rather in this uh, hour. Uh, Mr. Fuller, I guess it has to do with, um, he says, it's mostly about how white liberals hate us more than conservatives because they take part in organ harvesting all over this world. Now, I haven't seen the movie, but I have heard of several situations concerning, in particular, black folks and disappearing and being being uh, stolen, uh, organs rather, being being stolen uh, for um, the use of uh, white people. I, I've heard this. 
Uh, I understand, but I couldn't document it, but I understand that's what the 96 Olympics was about in Atlanta with all those black guys or black people being being coming up missing. And I guess his name was Wayne, I forgot his last name, Wayne Williams or someone uh, was supposed to be into that, which I don't know if that was true or not true, but I have heard this and, and maybe so. But that does seem like a movie that we need to see get out hmm. all righty anyway let's go to the um gmails here uh this is from dr dominic he says on page 434 of the revised edition mr fuller writes quote if there ever has been a so-called moral justification for the establishment of white supremacy which is racism it was totally destroyed when the first white man had sexual intercourse with the first non-white female, end of quote. He says, can you please have him explain this selected quote and its source? He says that's on page 434. That's what he has yes, right I, here. Uh, yes, uh, that is on page 434. Yes, sir. Under the quote section. Okay. If there had ever been a so-called moral justification for the establishment of white supremacy, it was totally destroyed when the first white man had sexual intercourse with the first non-white female. And I stick by that. And I, I think I've explained that earlier on this program. But uh, I'll say it again. It's because it's an unequal situation. You know, and you're establishing a system of white supremacy, which means, what does white supremacy mean? It means dominating and mistreating people because of color. That's the basis for your domination and mistreatment. No other basis. There is a person. That's what the white supremacist says. The white supremacist says to him or herself, Yon goes a person who has color in his or her skin. That makes that person automatically eligible to be dominated and mistreated by me because I do not have color in my skin. I am a white person. That person who has color in his or her skin is a non-white person, black, brown, red, yellow, beige, tan, whatever, but something that is non-white. And because of that color in that person's skin, that person is eligible, eligible by birth to be dominated and mistreated by me. And I will proceed to dominate and mistreat that person because of the color in his or her skin. That is my assignment. That is the reason for me being a white supremacist. Otherwise, the term white supremacy wouldn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. But that is the definition, really. Domination and mistreatment of people of color. That's the whole reason for being one. There's no other reason for it. It serves no other purpose. So, if you have sexual intercourse with somebody that you are dominating and you have taken the position that you, in the domination, you're also going to mistreat the person and let the person know in no uncertain terms that the person is being mistreated, then that is a major crime, all right? And so, therefore, there's no justification for the, you know, system of white supremacy at all. I mean, you know, if you were just saying, well, because we're white and we are smart or something like that, or we have ability or where we are located, we have more things that are available and whatnot than the people on the planet who are not. But we are just going to move around the planet and treat everybody justly. Well, that wouldn't be white supremacy because white supremacy means what? Dominating and mistreating people. Yes. So, you know, you got to have them both. You can dominate people without being, this, you know, domination, what does that mean? That means you have more authority. You tell the person what to do. That's domination, okay? But you're going to dominate and mistreat 
then that is what you call non-justice. And so this sexual intercourse between white and non-white in the system of white supremacy is a system of non-justice. Okay. The non-white person is a victim of non-justice when that happens. Okay. Every time. All right. And he wanted to know uh, the source of that information. Oh, the source of that information is me. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> all these are all my quotations in that quotation section in the back of the book. Okay. These are all of my quotations, okay. you know. All right, there you go, Dr. Dominic. Okay, moving on to the another question from Dr. Javari. Uh, he says this, Mr. Fuller, I, under, I understand Mr. Fuller's code approach to solving problems, but he knows as well as everyone else that whites interpret people asking too many questions as a potential troublemaker. If you are on the job, why should they put up with you risking a lawsuit when they can just hire a token who will not ask questions that arise suspicions? It's like what? when a cop goes undercover and asks too many questions and the gang gets suspicious. Eventually, the cop ends up dead or outed. The same thing happens sometimes, not always, but it is more common now that Trump has embodied white supremacy. Okay, if I understand the question, I, I you know, I'll just broaden Basically, the, uh, why, why, why should you, uh, is, as well as, uh, why should you ask, you know, or, or if you're on a job, why should you risk a lawsuit by asking questions when they can just hire a token who will not ask any questions and, and bring up suspicion. Well, the first thing you do is ascertain what are the laws governing question asking. All right? You have what they call rules, regulations, policies. I call them laws. Yeah. You either have a law that's for asking questions or a law that's against asking questions. So you ask the obvious question. Uh, how many questions are too many? In other words, a person says, well, you ask too many questions. And you say, well, sir, can I ask one more question? And if he gave you permission to ask that question, that question would be the logical question. Sir, how many questions in this institution are too many? You know? And then you, if they say, well, 365, you can ask one question per day, uh, calendar year. Oh, you say, okay. And then you check and see how many questions you have asked in that year. And if you've gone over 365, well, then you say, well, I've used up my questions for this year. But now if they bring up anything, say, well, if you didn't know what you were doing, why didn't you ask somebody? And then you can remind them then, sir, you told me on April the 20th that I had used up my allotment of questions for this year, if you recall. So I didn't ask about what I was going to do mm -hmm. in that assignment and how I was going to go about doing it. I just went about doing it the best way that I could without asking anybody anything. And then let them take it from there. See, in other words, there. when you go on a job, you go on the job saying, I will do what I'm told to do. And when it gets to the place I can't do what I'm told to do, I'm going to leave the job. That, that's your approach. See what I mean? That is not your job. You asked for that job. See, that was a question. Can I work here? And the person looks you over and says, well, we'll see. We'll try you. Yes, you can. But you will have to follow instructions that we give you. So once you do that, you want to always be in position to say, I did what I was told. And when it gets to the place where you can't do what you were told, you need to get another job. I mean, that's because we're all prisoners of war. Don't forget that. You know? Okay. All righty. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go, and you can simply download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app. 
to your cell, to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller, Jr. And if you have a question, you may call in at one 932 9766 or you can Gmail me at the numero 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at Gmail. Dot com and while and while you are doing that and you're on the home page hit that donate button right there so we can do the second hour of the compensatory concept come up coming up in about 10 minutes and while we are there mr fuller how or where can we get the copy of your book you always go to producejustice.com I've tried to uh, find out information about getting it, you know, in in other venues. I've once had it in the bookstores and whatnot. Uh, you can't get it there. You have to go to producejustice.com. Now, uh, I'm trying to work out other ways that mm-hmm. the book will be available, but that's somewhere down the road, I have been told. And you can get the of- book in Canada now, is that correct? You can get the book in Canada. Okay, good. And and uh, right now, you can. Anybody in Canada now can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com okay. and then work from there. All right. But that's the site for anybody who wants the book. Just oh. go to ProduceJustice.com. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, 1-877-932-9766 is the number you can call. Let's go to the Gmails. Uh, greetings, Mr. Fuller. Uh, an, another great constructive two hours. Uh, unless I've misinterpreted, Mr. Fuller, the general compensatory quotations, including the one read at the end of the show, found on page 434 of the revised expanded edition of the code, are all from Mr. Fuller. So that's the source in case anybody wanted to know. He also writes this. Um, wait a minute, let me scroll down here. Um, in this high-tech era, he says, many listeners have smartphones and or tablets. Uh, we should all be reminded to download the Talktainment Radio app. The Talktainment Radio app is free and provides the opportunity to listen live and contains a vast library of past shows, including all of the other shows from TalkTeamAtRadio.com. That comes from uh, Roop Dog. So thank you, uh, Roop Dog, <laughs> for that. Uh, well, it turns out that it was a commercial. one 877 as we um, get to the um, closing out of the uh, first hour of the compensatory uh, concept, still on, on labor. Uh, Mr. Fuller, on page, um, let's see here. 143, you wrote at the end of the page down here that um, white supremacist races make it their business to train their victims, non-white people, to react to every situation in a manner that causes their victims to do more harm to themselves than they do to the system of white supremacy, which is racism. Can you explain that, please? Oh, sure. Uh, Particularly in job situations. Uh, They set black people up. One thing, uh, many white supremacists have concluded that in most cases, or in many cases, uh, black people, non-white people, act according to their emotions. So they know what buttons to push. They, they just about know when they're going to fire you and how they're going to go about doing it because they know when they're going to make you angry. They know how to make you angry. They know how to make you laugh. They know how to get you to relax. They know how to get you uptight. So they say, okay, well, we're going to get rid of that fellow today. So we'll have him come in, and uh, we'll uh, start telling him this and telling him that and whatnot. we got our own strategies and whatnot, and uh, we have been studying him. And we know that he has a temper. So at this point, this one thing, because white supremacists always study their victims, and they know more about their victims than the victims know about themselves, all right? The white supremacists know more about me than I will ever know about myself. 
or right? they make it their business to do that. So they can kind of predict behavior. And in job situations, when they get ready to get rid of a non-white person, they'll say, hey, what we'll do, we'll make him mad. Because we know what will make him mad. So, you know, about 9 o'clock today, when he does, does this and does this and whatnot, you go over and say to him this, 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 and this. Now, that'll get him angry. And he's going to immediately blow up. He's going to start calling names and all like that. And today, by 5 o'clock, he'll be fired. So we'll just set him up for that. He'll walk right into the trap. He won't be expecting it. And this happens all the time. Yes. See what I mean? So non-white people should be aware of this. Okay. When they get ready to get rid of you, everything is just fine. But now he's got a cousin that needs your job. And he says, hey, well, Henry, I mean, you know, that black guy down there, he's got that position. And he's doing an excellent job and all like that. Say, well, but my cousin needs that job. So how are we going to get rid of Henry and do it all nice and neat? Say, well, we'll make him angry. So you know how these people are. You know, they always got a chip on their shoulder and whatnot. They always want somebody to respect them. Mm -hmm. They're real big on respect. So you say something that sounds like you're disrespecting them. He's going to go off. It's not going to be disrespect. Because these black people don't even know what respect is. See, they just know what we have told them. So they set them right. up, huh? They don't have a definition for respect. Mm -hmm. They think they do. Okay? So, we'll, you know, we'll have them play in our hands. Just like they do with everything that we relate to them. That's why we are dominant. That's why we are white supremacists. And that's why they are always victims. Because they do not think ahead. You know? They only think about how they feel at the moment. And we'll always use that against them. Because they're very emotional people. You know, mm. they fly off the handle real quick. <laughs> See what I mean? But you got to know what buttons to push. And we know what buttons to push because we understand them better than they understand themselves. Okay, so generally it's a, it, it, it's, it's a setup. You're it's being, a setup. Okay, you're being set up. Yeah. Mm. You know, when you run the kindergarten, I mean, you know your children, all right? And that's what the white supremacists look at the whole world of non-white people. They say, we know how to move these people around. They don't even know they're being moved around. <laughs> you know, we know how to, you know, set them up for, have, make them laugh, make them laugh like you wouldn't believe. And we know how to make them mad. I mean, just have them, I mean, storming around the place, knocking things over. We know how to do that. See, so we'll just orchestrate it. Anytime we want them to do anything, I mean, we know how to handle them. They don't know anything about how to handle us, even though they think they do. That's why they're in the position that they're in, and we're in the position that we're in. We are white supremacists, and they are victims of white supremacy, just like all their ancestors, because they didn't know anything either. Mm. Wow. <laughs> all righty. Woo. Uh, now, you made suggestions as we get ready to close out the um, first hour here. Under the suggestions on page 144, uh, could you read the first three if we have time here? Under 144. The suggestions? Yeah, 144. Where is the suggestions? Okay, that says uh, the suggestions Yeah. on 144. Uh, I'm looking at that now. It says stop being on automatic in support of the system of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's real, real broad. Yes. I don't even and, know what I meant. And number two, quickly before that, we go that, on. That's real broad. Yeah. Okay. But number two might help it out. Put okay. a little flesh on those bones. Number two says, be a keen observer of what others are doing and saying. Listen to others, but always try to say no more than is necessary. All now, right. That is really important. Yes, sir. Now, you hear the music? That means we've got to close out the first hour. Talk to him at radio.com, the world's greatest radio and radio Thanks the way it should be heard. To the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on talktainmentradio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power the world's greatest radio talktainmentradio.com talktainmentradio.com 
Worldwide Sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Alrighty, welcome back to the second hour of the compensatory concept of Neely, of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This is the money hour, the donation hour. TopTainmentRadio.com, we go where you go, the world's greatest radio, and you are again in touch with the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is Radio the Way It Should Be Heard. We've been speaking in the fourth area of people activity. This is the final or the fifth and final installment of that fourth area, which is labor. But, of course, Mr. Fuller will answer any question that you have. It doesn't have to be in the fourth area. All you have to do is call one 877 or you can Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com, and I will try to get your emails um, or, G- yeah, your Gmails on. I may not have time, but I will try to do that. And also, I'm reminded that since this is the second hour, this is uh, the donate hour. So make sure that while you are on there, if you haven't, go ahead and hit that donate button so that we can continue with the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. This is what you requested, and this is what we are doing. Uh, let's go to the phone line. So right now, okay, uh, line number one? Okay, one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Yes, I had to talk with Mr. Fuller, and I was asking him about the, the podcast, and I, he didn't know the answer, but I called the station, and the, and the station explained to me how you can get the podcast. And I think it would be a good idea for you to explain to the listeners, if you do know how to do it, how they can get the podcast. What did they tell you, sir, about the podcast? They told me to click on Mr. Fuller's name. Okay. On Mr. Fuller's picture. And then from there, you will see the programs that they have on on the station. Okay. And then you scroll down to the programs that they have uh, for Wednesday, uh, which is the politics. Yes. Et cetera. And then you click on that. And then from there, you will see uh, the programs that comes up for TalkTainmentRadio.com. Yes, sir. And then you uh, and it, yeah, this uh, the podcast. But when I seen the podcast, uh, they only had, if I recall correctly, three programs on the podcast. Not like it was a whole list of podcasts, maybe from a while ago. But I think it was only three that I seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is better than none. All right, that's one thing I have to say. Uh, the, the But it's kind of difficult, so I think that maybe it should be regularly explained how people can get the podcast. Okay, I'll tell you what but I'll... It, it is kind of, it's a little difficult, but it's a little tricky, but if you really fish around hard, you, you will be able to find it. Uh, okay, it, what I'll do is, is I'll try to ask uh, the... Program director, uh, how can people get more uh, of the podcast on on the compensatory concept? 
And when they tell me, then I will relay that to everybody so everybody will know that they can pick up other shows. Thank you for that inquiry, man. Uh, I, got, I got something else. To say. All right, go ahead quickly. All right. Now, when people call in, uh, the listeners on the program can barely hear. Well, I know I can barely hear the person's questions or their statements. Although I can hear Mr. Fuller, his response clearly. But uh, I think it would be good if Mr. Fuller or you repeat the person's questions since we can't barely hear what they're saying or either ask the people to speak louder or clearer in asking their questions or making their statements. I think it would probably be better if you state the question. I mean, state the, yeah, the question that they're saying or, or the statement so that we can hear the, the statement on the question is asked, although we can hear Mr. Fuller. Okay, I'll take that under advisement. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's do this one. Let's go to the phone, or rather the um, Gmails. Uh, this, com this comes from uh, Dr. Anonymous. He says, uh, greetings, Mr. Fuller. Uh, I was speaking with a suspected white supremacist about World War II, and I asked him, did he think they would have defeated Japan if they didn't have the atom bomb because 250,000 soldiers died taking the islands of Japan? And his answer scared me. He said, yes, it just would have taken 10 more years. It was very cold and calculating. My question, Mr. Fuller, is why do they collectively lay down their own lives and lives of, other, uh, of their children and captives to complete a, a mission? And where is the fun and glory in that? And thank you. I will remain anonymous. Oh, well, uh, now, first of all, I want to say not all white people, you, you don't assume, and you certainly don't say it, are racist. You don't ever say that. You don't know all white people. But you do know that some white people are. And the white people who are seem to be smarter and more powerful than those who aren't. So let's get that clear. Mm -hmm. That's something I have to repeat every now and then so we get that clear. Those white people who believe in dominating and mistreating people based on color appear to be, appear to be smarter and more powerful than those white people who don't believe in dominating and mistreating people of color. And where is the evidence? Well, the evidence shows that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now because the white people who don't believe in racism would have gotten rid of it. They would have just stepped forward and said, enough of this nonsense. We're not going to have any more of it. And so then that means that the white people that do believe in racism would just stop. I mean, they would see that they are, hey, we, we, we can't stay in this business any longer. Because the other white people don't, you know, who are not racist, they don't go along with this. So therefore, we out of business. So you know, we have to find something else to do to have what, you know, what everybody wants really: fun, glory, and material comfort. Every creature in the universe wants that. It's just that the system of white supremacists is designed to do it by mistreating people. You can do the same thing by not without mistreating people. There are some people who will argue that point. In fact, I read somewhere many years ago, someone said, in order to have justice for some, you must have injustice for others. That makes no sense at all, even though I read that. You know, I had to take a double take and a triple take and a quadruple take when I read that in a book by a person who says in order to have justice for some, you must have injustice for others. I looked at that and looked at that and read it over and over again, 
And I said, now, this is how stuff gets started. A person just makes just a bold statement just like that that makes no sense at all. That's a total contradiction. You either have justice or you don't. And what is justice? Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Now, it has never happened in con- in the recorded history, as far as I know, but that should be the goal. You replace all systems that govern people with a system of justice. I don't care what kind of system it is. You know, people can call it by any name, but the most important system to be gotten rid of is the system of white supremacy because it's designed to maintain non-justice. We already have non-justice. We already have that imbalance between people. And the system of white supremacy is just the latest of a long string of world governments that are designed to mistreat people. And white supremacy is just one of the latest and the most prominent. I say it's the only one that's functional on the planet right now. The system of white supremacy is the only government of people that really counts on this planet right now. And it's a government that's designed to dominate and mistreat people. And it just so happened that it's dominating and mistreat people and mistreating people based on color. It's just a royalist system put on a color basis. The king can do no wrong. And if you're a white person, you're the king. If you're a white person, you're the queen. Royalty can do no wrong. Everything they do is right. That's been the doctrine of royalty ever since there's been royalty. Anywhere. But when they put it on a color basis, it turned out to be the most dominant and and uh, most punishing and the most progressive idea for dominating and mistreating people and accomplishing a whole lot in doing so, a whole lot meaning providing fun, glory, and material comfort for the mistreaters than any system of government that has ever existed because it became worldwide almost instantly when you consider how long time has been invented. Mm -hmm. Like all of the millennials, like millions of years, there's never been a more powerful government on this planet than the system of white supremacy. All righty. TalkTimeAtRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news and lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and, of course, politics. Now, here are several that I will share with you, maybe three. Uh, The Kinsman, At the Table, and Urban Flow are all shows that you can get when you go to TalkTainmentRadio.com. All you have to do is click on Programs for the Scheduled Times, and um, and the days, all that is exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nilly Fuller, Jr. And uh, we've been discussing the fourth area of human activity, the fourth. And this is the fifth show, the, the final installment of that, which is labor. So if you have any questions concerning that, you may ask those questions by calling one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six. But you don't have to have a question that is specific to that. You can ask anything because this show is unrehearsed. Mr. Fuller will take any questions that you have uh, to uh, offer. And so, in other words, you can go off topic. It's one of the one of the favorite things you can do on radio. The way it should be heard. And while you are there, if you haven't. Hit that donate button. If you listen to this program every uh, Wednesday for these two hours, hit that donate button so we can continue to do that and you can continue to listen. And that is exclusive to talk to him at radio.com, radio the way it should be heard. Okay, getting back into 
uh, labor. Now, you mentioned under suggestions on page uh, 144, you mentioned the first two. There were five. Now, you mentioned number one, stop being um, on automatic in support of the system of white supremacy racism. And then you mentioned this one, be a keen observer of what others are doing and saying. You said listen to others, but always try to say no more than is necessary. Now, let's go to three, four, and five. What is the third one there? The third one is when speaking, always do your best to put everything you say in the form of a question. Stay away from statements. Statements can get you in trouble. Just, you know, always seek to get correct information and then use that information in the correct manner, in the most constructive manner. But when speaking, always do your best to put everything you say in the form of a question. Make a record of the answers you receive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you ask a question and you get an answer, you make a record of the, you know, just jot it down in your notes, uh, carry some, in the Northwestern Hemisphere, you might say you can have a number of uh, uh, spiral-type binders, I would say, in this day and time, um, and just at the top, just put a date up there. You always want to have a date, and now if anybody tells you anything in answer to your questions, put down the date and time of the person and the name yes. of the person that told you whatever was told to you. Uh, that information may come in handy six months down the road or a couple of years down the road. Mm -hmm. You never can tell. I mean, we usually have very, very, very short memories. So anything of any real importance, jot it down. Jot down exactly what the person uh, whom you thought said something that you need to remember said. Okay. Write that down, and then, you know, you can cast it aside. I mean, you can get back to it anytime you think, you know, that uh, you might need it. Okay. And you just might need it. You just might. You might need those remarks. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe two years down the road, when everybody's forgotten about all of it, you can always turn back to what you wrote and, and then raise a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs., uh, you know... Uh, Johnson, Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Jones, or whatever, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, did you not make this statement on April the 3rd, you know, of 1988? And I will read uh, as follows, you know, and you put it in the form of a question. And then you will make, repeat the statement, read it word for word, just like they said it. All right. Because people forget things. People forget things. You know, and mm -hmm. that's what writing is for. Yes, sir. To compensate for what? Forgetfulness. And what is number four? Number four is be calm. Take notes. Yes. Never express anger or use profanity toward others. Never, ever do that on a job. Don't ever say anything, curse words and whatnot, to anybody in some kind of hostile manner. Never. Under any circumstance, do that. It's, why? Where's the logic? It's not going to help you do anything. That's why. So when that person calls anything you Anything that you do on the job, always make sure that it helps you to do something. Right. That's going to help you. All right? That's not going to help you. Using profanity is not going to help you do anything that needs doing. You know, let the other person use all the profanity they want to. Just let them go to it. Work out. And so, you don't respond to any of it. So if somebody calls you an MF, which you said seems to be the favorite word of some people. Yes, that's the black national anthem in the Northwestern Hemisphere, truth be told. MF. Wow. Yes, oh. lift every voice and sing. That's not even nowhere on the register. Truth, we need to tell the truth about how we speak, how we act, what we glorify, what we brag about as being black culture. Black culture, one of the epicenters of black language is the term MF in the Northwestern Hemisphere. A terrible term, but we worship it like it came from Buddha or Jesus or Muhammad. And it knows nothing like that came from any of these people as far as I know. Mm. But we think 
that is something that's unique to black people that we need to hold on to and use it to describe everything from our neighbors to people in our family to your, your, your best buddy sometime uh, to a tree to a bus. Everything is what? An MF. MF this, MF that. The rain is MF. Hmm. Here comes that MF rain. The rain? Yeah, man. It's raining like a MF. What are you talking about? Shut up. Find another language. I've heard that before. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, before we take the next call, number five, what does it say? Number five. Number five. Yes. Always, always think, think, and think again before speaking, writing, and or acting. And I hope that I've done that right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? That. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about what I just said just now. It was good. Let's take the full call. <laughs> okay, caller, you're on now with Mr. Daly Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Yes, uh, I'm on there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, my question for Nelly Fuller, um, I read your your first book, but I don't have the revised edition yet. And uh, as far as uh, economics and employment, uh, what should a non-white male do in the case of, you know, being unemployed and uh, his non-white, you know, his, his consort is employed and, you know, the pressure is put on to you to contribute? You know, what what actions should you take in the, in that situation from your opinion? You know, if that was you, Mr. Fuller, because I know you can only speak from your opinion. The white, su the white supremacists uh, keep that imbalance. Uh, many, many what you call households, the black female brings in the most revenue. That's by design. The white supremacists know that. And they want the black male to be sitting there looking at television on the couch while the black female has a job and she's getting out there at 6 o'clock in the morning so she can make all those two buses that she's got to catch in order to bring in the rent money and the grocery money. And here's Clyde. He's sitting over there watching TV, I mean, and lounging and whatnot because he doesn't have a job. It's not because he won't work. It's because he can't find a job. The white supremacists want it that way because what? That makes for hostility. That makes for dislocation. That makes for a breakup of the arrangement that the female has with the male, non-white. That's by design. The white supremacists want it that way. So what do you do? you realize that that is the case, and you minimize the conflict as best you possibly can. And then just keep trying to get a job of some type, even though you will probably be making less than the female person. Because why? The white supremacists want it that way. They want it that way. That's by design. That's not accident. If they wanted it any other way, it wouldn't be that way. You can take that one to the bank. That's true. The white supremacists do what they want to do. They can do it any way that they want to do it. And whichever way you see it is, it's because they want it that way. If you are non-white and you're on this planet, whatever situation that you're in, it's a result of the white supremacist decisions. Why? That's what white supremacy means. They don't leave anything for, by what you call accident, you know, or incident, or looking all innocent, and, oh, we don't have anything to do with that. Oh, 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 yes, you do. You have to do with all of it. There's nobody that tells anybody what to do except you. You know, it's not any mysterious people, I mean, you know, coming from some other planet. We're all on this planet together. We're all stuck here for a while, like Rodney King says. And we ought to get a quality relationship. Mm -hmm. So... Just realize that you're in this situation. You're a prisoner of war, both you and your mate. And you are prisoners of war. Okay. But the war... So, so the you said, Mr. Fuller, not to cut you off, the key is to minimize conflict. Yes. I mean, by realizing that this is all very well orchestrated.
See, it was this way before you were born. So it has nothing to do with, you know, you and the person that you are with. That's all, you know, what place you're going to have in the system of racism was all laid out before you were born. That's what racism is about. They plan everything for you. Doesn't make any difference what your plans are. They don't mean anything. It's what the white supremacists have planned for you. That's what's going to happen. See, just like always think of yourself as a prisoner. Yes. Yeah, you're you're in born in a prison. Mm-hmm. And the female, your partner, she's born in the same prison. So in a prison, what? who determines what happens? The warden, the, warden. the people that run the, the prison. See, so they tell you whether you're going to work in the laundry or not, or whether you're going to work uh, uh, picking up uh, a litter in the prison yard. They determine that. Or in the library or whatever. Yeah, are you going to be in the prison library? Or if you're going to have a prison library? Yeah, yeah. Can I ask another question? Yeah, quickly, please? quickly. Okay, real quickly, Mr. Fuller. Uh, knowing that this is the fact and the way that white supremacists want this situation for us to be, in education, uh, as far as education is concerned, why should a, a non-white male even go to get an education in in the light of they gonna let the white supremacists are gonna allow you to do what they want you to do anyway. So why not just go with the flow? You do no, you do the best that you can. And just like that's why I use the movie Shawshank Redemption as something that you can learn a whole lot just by paying attention just from that one movie. Because Shawshank Redemption is about a prison. And all of the non-white people in the system of white supremacy are in prison on this planet, wherever you are, on the islands and everything. You're in prison, whether you know it or not. In the prison of what? The system of white supremacy. That's the name of the prison. A world prison for all non-white people. So therefore, you do the best you can while you're in prison. Now, the character in the movie Shawshank Redemption did the best he could by doing what? He said, well, I got all this time to do. I'm in prison. I can't go nowhere. So I'm going to use my time the best way that I can. And so what is an excellent way to use time? To study. See? I mean, just sitting there studying the prison walls, that's not going to get you anything but just learning about the prison walls. So Andy the Frame, the character in the movie, did what? He, he went and asked the warden, can I set up a library. Because what does a library do? It brings in knowledge. All right? There's a lot of books that, you know, you can look at them. You're not going to get anything out of them that you can use. Millions of them. Millions of books are printed all the time. When you read them, there's not a whole lot that you can get out of it that you can really use. That's why a lot of people got contempt for books. Because there's not a whole lot in a lot of books, millions of them, where after you read the book, you say, now, what can I really get out of that that I can use? Well, you know, millions of books do not have a lot in them that you can use. But then there are some books in some places that sometimes you can get things out of it that you can use. So here's where the law of compensation, you do the best you can. Try to pick out the books or the movies or the TV shows, or any source of information, or radio, talk at radio, whatever, where you can learn something that maybe, just maybe, just one or two things, out of maybe hundreds of things, say, now I can use that. Yeah. And that's what a library does. Okay. And the frame understood that. TalkTainmentRadio.com, we go where you go. Check us out on 94.1. WGRN podcasts are available. Download the talk team at radio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. Stay right there. We have a few more questions and uh, more of your phone calls. All that and more coming up next as we discuss labor on talk team at radio.com.
Southwest Ohio. Sunday, April 2nd, AEG presents An Evening with the Legendary Temptations. Featuring Dennis Edwards. With special guest, Lenny Williams of Tower of Power. And Calvin Richardson with a Bobby Womack tribute. Doors open at 6 and show starts at 7. Get tickets now at the Kappa Ticket Center or Kappa.com. To Libs, Milano, Beauty All Over, and Elite Barbershop. The Temptations featuring Dennis Edwards at the Palace Theater. For more info, call 614-805-1376. Families affected by disasters urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to those affected by disasters, big and small. Donate to Red Cross Disaster Relief. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. See that cute little dog in the pet store? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppies to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Think fast. In less than 30 seconds, a small flame can become a big fire. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and keep heaters three feet away from anything that can burn. Learn more at usfa.org. FEMA.gov because fire is everyone's fight. I've got the water, energy bars, and camera. I think we're set for the hike. Almost. We need to protect our skin. Don't forget your wide brimmed hat and sunscreen. Oh, right. I've got the hat. I've got SPF 30. Will that work? Yeah. Anything 15 or higher is good. Just make sure it says broad spectrum. Great. Got it. I am not getting burned again. Let's go. Learn more at cdc.gov slash cancer. Every year, June marks the beginning of two busy seasons, summer and wedding season. If you are legally changing your name, you need to apply for a replacement Social Security card reflecting your new name. This is easier to fix now when you first change your name than years from now when you retire. So go to our website at www.socialsecurity.gov slash SS number or call us at 1-800-772-1213, TTY 1-800-325-0778 to find out what specific documents you need to change your name and apply for a replacement card. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Go ahead. Make my day. You got the power. Ready as we return from break. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go. Download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nelly Fuller, Jr. We have been talking about the fourth area of people activity, labor. This is the fifth and final installment on that. And if you'd like to get in contact with the show, you may do so by calling 1-877-932-9766. Or you can Gmail me at the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby at gmail dot com. And I was reminded by my good friend Galen that don't forget this weekend. Turn your clocks up. In other words, spring forward because for whatever reason we're going into daylight savings time. So that's an hour earlier. Spring forward. And while you're springing forward, and while you are tuned into the program, don't forget to hit the donate button for the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Nilly Fuller Jr. If you're listening to it and you haven't donate, donate. If you're listening to it and you have, thank you for donating. All righty. Okay, let's go to the Gmails. Uh, this comes from Dr. J. He says, Mr. Fuller, um, how should we respond to someone who says, there's only one race, the human race, or that we're all human beings. Yes. I would uh, like to address that word human because uh, sometimes people call the nine areas of activity the nine areas of human activity. Uh, but really, I call it people activity. I don't use the word human because people are not human. Uh, that's just my analysis of it. Uh, could be true, could not be true. Something you can think about. 
But I say human beings do not exist because you can't have human beings in a system of white supremacy. That's the dominant government on the planet. So people are not humane. We are beings, B-E-I-N-G, but we are not human beings because human beings do what? Practice justice. And here again, it's impossible to practice justice in a system of white supremacy. Why? Because the system of white supremacy is supreme and it's dedicated to practice in what? Non-justice. So you can't have people treating each other in a humane manner in an inhumane system. That doesn't work. Mathematically, that's not possible. So you have people, even when we show kindness and all like that, I mean, it doesn't reach the level of what we call humanity because humanity means, or humane treatment, means you have a system of justice, which means what? Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Okay. No exceptions to that. No exceptions. Okay. Then he writes this, which you've answered before, but I'm going to read it anyway. He says, have you ever considered making medicine a potential 10th area of activity, which is basically the power over one's health, life, and death, and in the system of white supremacy. It's they who can determine whether we live or die or the type of health care we have access to. Is it, if not, is it because you're set in only having the nine areas that you have established decades ago and consider medicine as falling under, let's say, economics or one of those other areas of activity? Medicine falls under all of those areas of activity. Economics, that's medicine. Education, that's medicine. Entertainment, if it's constructive entertainment, that's medicine. Labor, constructive labor, building things, working things, uh, you know, uh, operate machinery in such a way that you have a constructive result. That's medicine. Law, going into a court or interacting with people, you know, all day long in a way that you have constructive results. That's medicine. Law, politics, religion. Religion is medicine if it's conducted correctly and with a constructive result. Sex, that's medicine. It's all medicine. And, of course, the last area of activity, war, counter-war. Now, we are always supposed to be interested in counter-war. We're supposed to be countering war. Get rid of war altogether. That's why I call it war slash counter-war. That's the ninth area of activity. War, as it is now, is just one war. And that's the war between those who believe in racism and those who don't. Everything that we call war otherwise, that's just battles within the war. A battle is something that happens in a war. And it's only one war. The war between those who believe in racism and those who don't. Okay. And so far, the races have won that war. All righty. Uh, this comes from Dr. Weston. He writes this uh just got a comment for you, Brother Fuller, uh, this particular AM. Just want to tell you that after months and years of struggling with when you t- told us that the white supremacists are the smartest people on the planet, I got to admit that you're right because just look at how they've moved the slave plantation from the cotton fields to the prison system, and most of us didn't see it or realize it for 30, 40, or 50 years after they've locked up hundreds of thousands of brothers on nonsense. So I realize now that what you are saying is that they're always scheming and planning 
while all we do is react after the fact. In like the game of Survivor on TV, we should be trying without without playing and outlasting them until we do. We'll just keep being in their their pawns that they move around on a chessboard however they choose. That was his comment. You care to comment on that? Well, that's my analysis. I mean, that's why I wrote the book. You don't write a book about solving a problem if there is no problem. I wrote a book about solving a problem, and I said the biggest problem on the planet is the problem of racism in the form of something called white supremacy, and that you can't solve any major problem among the people of this planet until you solve that one. I don't care what you do. I don't care what your problem is or where you are on this planet called Earth. If you don't solve the problem of racism, you're going to have problems that are going to keep happening and happening and happening. Why? Because racism itself is a problem maker. Even though they solve problems of physical things, the system of racism is very accomplished, very Mm -hmm. efficient in getting things done, in Mm -hmm. handling things, going into the ground and getting gold and iron and and, uh, making the iron ore into steel and uh, making all kinds of products, spoons, forks, uh, pots and pans, uh, trains and uh, getting other minerals out of the sand, uh, out of the soil. I mean, and, uh, making airplanes and all like that. Being able to go from one place to another uh, very swiftly and in a very efficient manner. But So a person might look at it and say, well, white supremacy accomplishes all this in a very efficient manner, more than any other system known in history. And that's true. But, Where's the problem? The problem is millions of people are thrown away deliberately in the process. So it comes down to people matter? Or just making some fancy airplane or some fancy looking car, is, does that take priority over people? The white supremacist says, well, when it comes to non-white people, yes. A pretty car is worth 10 million black people's lives. Just making a pretty car for somebody to look at and ride around the block in. That's worth 10 million Negroes right there. I mean, if you have to kill 10 million black people, so what? And that's an incorrect analysis. Yes, sir. People who have that type of mentality should not be running anything, even Uh, though they are highly skilled. (laughs) Why? Because they don't have the correct intention. Yes, sir. So, therefore... Job, it's the job of the victims of that type of system to get rid of that system mm-hmm. and come up with a better system. You can have a fancy car by using a system of justice. It's just a different system, and you don't throw away anybody in the process. That's the theory. Okay. Going to the bottom of page 144, you have it uh, in bold letters, where it says, uh, could you read that where it says, in matters of labor? In matters of labor, what now? At uh, the bottom of page 144, in matters of labor as in all other... Oh, in matters of labor mm-hmm. as in all other forms of people activity, it is important to be aware of the existence of the many forms of so-called administrative practices that are, in truth, none other than sophisticated or not so sophisticated ways of mistreating people. And then I have, uh, going into page 145, I have listed 10 of them. Yeah, let, yeah let's, let's do that. Okay, go ahead. All right, the types of administrative subversion, that's what I call it, in support of incorrect government. Administrative brutality, administrative detention and or dislocation without compensation. That's done all the time. People moved out of neighborhoods without compensation and have to move somewhere else where now, they have, without the compensation, that somewhere else is going to be worse at the place than the place they just left mm-hmm. in some way or another. And then number three, administrative espionage, spying on people in such a way that you get an incorrect result. 
mistreating people through espionage. Uh, number five, uh, number four, rather, administrative gerrymander, and that comes up in things like voting or even on a job, since we're talking about labor. You move people around. That's administrative gerrymander. Okay. When you move somebody around and move them to another position and tell them this is a better position when it really isn't. Yes. Okay. All right. That's administrative gerrymander. Number five. Number five, administrative harassment and our t- intimidation. And everybody on a job knows something about exactly. that. Exactly. And they need to stop doing it themselves if they're doing it. Okay. Number six, administrative royalism. Now, what is that? That is. Or somebody on the job just think that they're better than somebody else and got the right to push somebody else around. Okay. But you can't push them around. You can't even say the same things to them that they say to you. Otherwise, you are being what they call, quote, unquote, insubordinate or something like that. Is that close to, to nepotism? Well, royalism? you can call it that. You've got the different names for it, but it's all a form of, of royalism. Not, yeah, non-justice. Okay. So, okay. You okay. Know, Okay. You know. Hey, go go ahead. Number yes. uh, number seven. Right. Administrative sabotage. In other words, somebody messing with your work. Okay. All right. That's administrative sabotage. I mean, and that happens on some jobs. Right. Where you know, you said, Well, hey, I did this and then he came around and did it this behind me and all like that. He's sabotaging my work. Okay. All right, if he's doing it deliberately. I mean, so you got to watch for that. Okay. And then you have administrative slavery. And, of course, you can call all of it that. Okay. Any kind of mistreatment. Right. All right. All right. But I kind of break it down later on. And then number nine, administrative terrorism. That's making people fearful. Motivation by fear. That should never happen on any job. Never. Yeah. Causing people to be afraid of somebody. You know, here comes so-and-so. You know, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, you always feel uptight when this person comes mm-hmm. around because they're going to make you fearful of them. You're fearing them losing your job. You're fearing that you know you're going to say something. I mean, that's going to dissatisfy the person, and the person is going to you know get all over you about this, that, and other, and right. whatnot. Right. See, I mean, and you're kind of in terror of the Terrorism. person. And the last, so one? everybody on every job knows somebody like that if the job is big that's, enough. That's true. Okay, number ten. Administrative waste, fraud, deception, and our theft. That's another thing. I definitely wanted to mention that since we've been talking about labor for some time now. Never, ever, ever, in that last word, never steal nothing Woo! on a job. Never. Ever. I mean, you know, the small stuff, you know, that you can pick up, and nobody would ever miss it and all like that. Resist doing that. I'm going to tell you why. You get in the habit of stealing, you're going to get in the habit of stealing. All right? So you'll start off stealing something small, and then nobody says anything about it. Next thing you know, you'll steal something that's not so small. All right? And then you'll get that mentality of being a thief anyway. So it's best We don't not want to, that kind of world. It's best not to do it at all. Best not to do it at all. Resist the urge. I know you're going to get the urge. Everybody has that urge. I mean, you know. Hey, it's there. Nobody seems to care anything about it. They ain't going to miss it. <laughs> they ain't going to miss it, you know. Uh, and so you pinch off of the cake, so yeah. to speak. All, All right. right. We'll and go then back. the next thing you know, you get a slice off of the cake. See there? See and then there? the next thing you know, you decide to take the whole cake. Whole cake. cake. <laughs> All right. After about a year, I mean, nobody's saying nothing, so you just go in there and take the whole bakery. See, I mean, see, you know, yeah, don't do and that. And then you're in big trouble. Big trouble. See, so don't start it at all. That's it. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, caller, you are now on with Mr. Neely Fuller. What is your question? Hello? Hello? Yeah, you're on. Could you speak up? Yes, sir. Can I be heard? Yes, go ahead. Uh, good, good, good morning. Uh, I'm calling all the way from Austria, Vienna. Okay. And uh, I, I, I just had a, a statement and a question for Mr. Fuller. Okay, please. Uh, the statement is maybe you could explain to the listeners that, that the difference between uh, uh, being smart or being uh, wise, being kind, because I, I believe that a lot of non-white people have a problem with, uh, with, with the statement when Mr. Fuller says that White spoons are the most smartest people, you know, because we tend to equate that with being kind, being nice, and being loving, you know. 
So maybe you could just elaborate on that and just clearly state the difference between being smart and being kind and being wise okay. or being good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the 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 second question was uh, why does he why what what according to Mr. Fuller why is it that non-white people feel bad kind of like sensitive to their statement that white people are the smartest people why does that trigger some form of discomfort within us okay let's have mr fuller answer mr fuller oh well, non-white people have been taught to be embarrassed about not knowing something okay and they uh, non-white people black people northwestern hemisphere we you know sometimes just in fun and sometimes not in fun we brag about what we know and brag about and 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 look you know you might say call other people ignorant you know because of what they don't know well everybody is ignorant about many things even the smartest people on the planet are ignorant about a great number of things so knowledge is just something that you acquire as you go along Knowledge and understanding. Now, the white supremacists know how to mistreat people on a grand scale and get away with it. That's all that means. So that makes them smart. Anytime somebody can mistreat you and you don't know what to do about it, that person is smarter than you. I mean, that's not anything to make you, uh, you know, be ashamed of as far as the mistreatment because you didn't do anything. You know, that you're just being mistreated, and you don't know how to stop the person from mistreating you. Now, that's ignorance on your part, but it's legitimate ignorance. You just don't know what to do about it. Somebody's mistreating you, and you don't know what to do about it. They are smart enough to do it. Now, smart sometimes, in the minds of many black people, is equated with being good. No, you're wise, and there are no wise people, by the way, because you can't have wise people in a system of white supremacy. Otherwise, you wouldn't have white supremacy if you had any wise people, because the wise people wouldn't know what to do about it, because they understand the essence of evil and all like that. That's what you have to have to be wise, because wise people do not mistreat people and do not allow anybody to be mistreated. Yes. But since people are being mistreated, you don't have any wise people nowhere on this planet because people are being mistreated all over the planet. But you do have smart people. Now, what does smart mean? It just means you know what, how to do something, and anybody who doesn't want you to do it doesn't know how to stop you. Now, you can be smart that way. You can be smart in a constructive way, or you can be smart in a non-constructive way. But I make the distinction in the textbook itself between being wise and being smart. There are no wise people nowhere on this planet. Why? Because the evidence shows there are no wise people. Because wise people would know how to stop the mistreatment. So you don't have anybody who's qualified to be wise. Okay. okay? But you do have a lot of smart people. If you're smart enough to find the bus stop. And you're smart enough to find the bus stop. But if you want to catch the bus, and there's someone who doesn't want you to catch the bus, and they're smart enough to keep you from catching the bus, it means you have been outsmarted when it comes to catching the bus. And that's all that it means. That's all. Okay. But you can get smart by figuring out, now I'm going to get on this bus, and I'm going to figure out a way to stop this guy from stopping me from getting on this bus. But you are not smart until you are able to stop the person from stopping you from getting on the bus when that's what you intended to do. So smart just means you're able to do what you want to do, and anybody who wants to stop you hasn't figured out how to stop you. All right. And the white supremacists, by that definition, have turned out to be the smartest people in the world. There's a lot of people who would like to say, white supremacy shouldn't exist, but nobody has proven themselves to be smart enough to bring it into non-existence, okay. and that's the truth. That's the truth. Okay, thank you for your call, caller. Let's go to the uh, phone line, line number two. Okay, line number two, quickly, what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Hey, how's it going? 
Nah, this is amazing. I'm glad to be able to talk to both of you all. How you doing, Mr. Bobby? And what's going on, Mr. Polo? Well, ready, um, sir. I, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous at the moment. All right, all right. Mr. Fuller, I uh, just want to start by letting you know that you and Dr. Francis Press Wilson are like my spirit uh, grandparents, <laughs> so to speak, because it's like everything that you all are saying, I'm, I'm gravitating to, and I'm like listening to all your podcasts. Uh, I'm trying to soak up as much information as I can, and also I just ordered a book, too. Good. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Now, uh, my question is, uh, me personally, I am going through all of the nine areas of activity, and I have to pay respect by reciting all of them nine to you. Um, education, entertainment, no, excuse me, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, and counter war at that. Now, by me doing, by me going through all of those, so far I personally feel like I have um, alleviated myself from, like, for example, religion. I no longer need religion. So, I'm wanting to know your opinion on if a person such as victims of racism, white supremacy, can be independent or stray away from all nine areas of activity independently, if I'm saying it correct. Wait a minute. <laughs> Whoa. If a person what? Okay. For a person like myself, which is a victim of white supremacy that is under this system of white supremacy, can I independently... Um, gain control of my own um, my own power, so to speak, uh, from white supremacy. I mean, I know we cannot get out of the sum of white supremacy as a collective, but independently, can we like be, can we detach ourselves from it? Yes. Well, uh, see the the concept itself of the entire book. That's why I call it the United Independent Concept. If you can solve the problems of each individual non-white person on the planet in all these areas of activity. Just methodically start trying to solve the problem of each individual person. Just go through the textbook and use that as a guide and then come up with other things. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that are not in the book. I mean, the idea is that people come up on their own because everybody's circumstances are different. But if each individual person knows what to do and what not to do, what to say and what not to say, every minute of each and every day. You are, by logic, you are solving the problems of each individual person, and therefore you are solving the problems of all persons collectively. See? So the code is designed to go right to each individual person's problem, whatever that problem is in whatever area of activity. So you solve problem number one in the area of labor, maybe, and problem number six in the area of religion, and problem number four in the area of economics. And all over the world, people are just trying to solve their problems. It's all about problem solving. So, right. So eventually... And you can do it. It'll happen real fast. It depends on how fast people want to move in solving their problems. And so the well, next now, thing you know... Now, now as far as... Uh, I mean, now, now I already know that like certain things such as uh, economics, that might be a tough one to battle with, considering that, you know what I'm saying, the white supremacists own all of the resources that we do have. So, I mean, uh, I, I already know that's going to be kind of hard to encounter. And as far as war, I look at that as... All areas and uh, activity is war on its own, on their own uh, individual basis, it, correct? Well, all of these areas of activity blend into each other anyway, but it's all about just two words, problem solving. Problem solving. Yes. Okay, hey, I hate to cut it off, but the music has started, so thank you all for right, your call, Carla. All righty, talktainmentradio.com, the world's greatest radio and radio the way it should be.